and uh, welcome to this uh, attempt to do a little live stream and I'll talk and present a little bit about HTTP3 and curl in a way that I haven't really done before so um, uh, bear with me let's hope everything technical is going to work and yeah um, join the twitch chat if you want to like ask questions or uh, uh, just uh, ridicule my typos or uh, uh, I don't know whatever so <clears throat> today's subject and I'm going to I actually have this presentation or I'm, go I'm, trying, I'm going to try to follow my little uh, presentation here so um, well I'm better just get started so HTTP 3 in curl so just in case you're you haven't been here before you haven't seen me or whatever so I, I'm um, Daniel I uh, do curl since a long time um, I started this project 1998 I do a lot of internet protocols um, by day and by night and in IETF I work with the uh, uh, HTTP related protocols so I've been involved with HTTP and HTTP 1, 2 and 3 basically and I work for Wolf SSL <coughs> doing curl and uh, curl support and whatever you want me to help you with so today this is what I want to cover today or maybe or maybe not I uh, am um, so first let me let me tell you what I sort of had, had planned for today I wanted to just do a quick recap of what HTTP 3 is and means what and how it differs from HTTP 1 and 2 I don't want to I don't intend to go very much into details here because I've spoken about these details a lot before and I have other presentations about that and you can uh, uh, read my book on it and see videos that I've d done more explanations uh, that seems like a better investment so <clears throat> I'm also going I'm also going to um, talk about how to build HTTP 3 support into curl as it works today or will work today or tomorrow um, including alt services support and I'm going to show you how to do HTTP 3 uh, it's a complicated word to say a lot of times HTTP 3 transfers with the curl tool how to do them with libcurl and then a little uh, depending on um, uh, how, how fast and slow I am with this to just a quick um, walkthrough of, of the code in curl how it handles quick and HTTP 3 uh, in the source code <clears throat> is actually uh, surprisingly well separated from from most other codes so if you don't care about HTTP 3 and quick the regular curl code is muchly unaffected and I think you'll appreciate that and also if you care about quick and HTTP 3 code it's fairly well contained in a separate place and you you know where to look and where to find it so I'll, I'll show you uh, yes this will be uploaded to YouTube so um, you will see this on YouTube later and if you go to my channel on YouTube you will find I've done a n numerous HP3 talks already so you'll find a range of them there I've done them in 30 minutes in one hour and uh, one and a half hours so uh, there are different ones uh, they're not all the same but they're based on the same story basically and it's they vary depending on questions and a little bit my mood <clears throat> so this is like a different talk that I haven't done before and uh, basically curl hasn't supported HP3 like this before either so um, my plan is to do this within two hours or so it depends on if you ask questions if we dive into details if I get bored or something happens I'll I might end earlier or we go longer I, I don't know my plan is to start with the with the widest topics sort of the more generic ones and then go into building curl and then go into more and more niche and more into the into the details uh, as, as we go along but um, do ask questions uh, use the twitch chat ask me whatever and we can go back and dive in separate and uh, we bring up the 
terminal in Emacs uh, and whatever and, and figure it out if you have questions that I can answer and uh, I hope I can answer uh, a lot of other questions. And I hope I will address most topics just by myself through these little presentations. <clears throat> so, um, I wrote this document and I'm still sort of maintain it that uh, called HTTP3 Explained. It covers basically what HTTP3 is and why and how it is built on Quick and what it means. And also on that page, uh, the HTTP3 Explained page, there, there's um, an embedded YouTube video presentation, the one hour version I did a while ago. <clears throat> um, so if you want a uh, more in-depth uh, explanations about the protocols, Quick and HTTP3, those are the better places. But I will go through you know, the really, really quick version. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended. We've sort of tried to avoid the quick pumps because it gets a bit tedious. Uh, okay, so quick, the protocol created in the IETF. Um, this is the official logo. I don't remember when they actually designed this logo, but it was a while ago now. It's been used for uh, a few years already. I actually have that sticker on my laptop here, but I'm not going to show you. Um, so, improvement, quick. Okay, uh, this is a slide set, so I ripped out slides from my uh, bigger HTTP3 presentation, so this, uh, these slides are a little bit sort of um, <laughs> maybe not uh, in context, but the quick is a new transport protocol, right? And uh, it replaces TCP. So we no longer use TCP for transport or for, so, um, so we use quick instead. So quick improves in comparison to TCP. It fixes the TCP head of line blocking problem. That means that we can do multiple simultaneous parallel transfers within, within one connection without um, one of those uh, transfers blocking the others. Basically, if we have one, in the browser case, if we have one connection to a host and we want to transfer 100 images, if we drop a packet because we have a bad network, only that dropped packet that might affect one or two streams, that, those streams will have to wait for that drop packet to get resent and the other streams can continue. Uh, so that's the TCP header line blocking problem, quick fixes, and it introduces much faster handshakes and that is less back and forth, um, fewer ping pongs <coughs> to get a handshake up and earlier data. So already from the beginning in this protocol, there's a, <coughs> there's a method to send data already in the first packet in a zero RTT handshake, pretty much reducing the latency even more than before. <coughs> Quick is also always encrypted. There's no unencrypted version. And also, in fact, sorry, <coughs> compared to TCP with TLS, even more data is encrypted with Quick. So it actually sort of shows or reveals even less information um, in the normal typical case. This, of course, um, it's not only for, for security and privacy, but it also allows better future development because it um, prevents middle boxes and, and, and other softwares, you know, to inspect traffic and assume things about the traffic. And, and that leads to a lot of problems in today's internet because assuming things are not good when we introduce uh, improvements over time called ossification. But I'll, I'll not get into that a lot, but Quick then is built on top of UDP. And you've heard this before and you should just remember this. It's not UDP, it is built on UDP <clears throat> because TCP and UDP remain sort of the ones, the protocols that are usable across the internet uh, on a wide scale because so many boxes and, and routers and NATs and firewalls and everything out there, they only know about TCP and UDP and possibly ICMP, but, but uh, so they can only uh, NAT these protocols and they can't really handle it. If, if you try to send a new protocol, they will be blocked at a fair amount of attempts, a fair share of the attempts on the, across the internet. So they remain problematic. 
So we stick to TCP and UDP. So when we build a new protocol like Quick, it is built on top of UDP, as pretty much as if UDP was IP. Use UDP as a transfer, just sort of a packet transfer or a message transfer, and then build a reliable transport protocol stack on top of that. In, in the Quick case, it is always built in user space so far and will probably be for, for a while longer. <clears throat> doesn't have to be user space, but um, I think it'll be a long time until someone um, moves it into a kernel space. Uh, due to the complexity using TLS and also because so far it has been moving all the time, so <clears throat> yeah, it'll take a long time. User space it is for, for the foreseeable future. And so I think uh, and a sort of an easy way to view it is that um, Quick is pretty much like TCP and TLS in one. You set up a connection and you get a reliable connection at once and it uses encryption and security. So it's like setting up TCP and TLS in one go, basically. So I can, if the sound audio is a little low, I can raise a little bit. Um, okay, uh, it's uh, complicated technical matters. So okay, <clears throat> quick then, yes, over UDP. So it fixes this TCP header line problems thanks to the transport protocol here using streams in itself. So if you set up connection, you can do multiple streams within that connection. Um, you might remember uh, HTTP2 doing this within the HTTP layer. You can always also do this with SSH um, or um, another protocol that has it before is SCTP. So it's, it's not a new thing. Uh, what is good for us in this case, it is that Quick is a transport protocol. So it replaces TCP and yet provides streams in the transport protocol. So it allows, um, new application protocols to get streams for free, basically. We don't have to introduce the streams in the application layer, like we did with HTTP2, we introduced streams in the HTTP layer. Now they're provided by the transport layer. <clears throat> and they're then, uh, as I alluded to earlier, they're totally independent, these streams, independent in the way that if we drop a packet from one stream, uh, that stream has to wait, of course, until that packet is retransmitted. But the other streams that haven't lost any packets, they can go on, um, which, ha which has the uh, fun effect that you can actually, a server or one end can start sending stream A and then stream B and then stream C. But in the other end, they might actually complete in another order, depending on packet retransmission and uh, reordering of, of things. So that means that the, the streams are independent and they are actually, they might actually arrive in another order, but within the streams, they are of course reliable and in order and everything. So each stream can be seen pretty much like a separate TCP connection, but they are all done over a single TCP or single quick connection. <laughs> Priority of streams is, that's an interesting, <clears throat> interesting little tidbit that I even didn't mention here because priority of the streams are um, priorities of streams doesn't exist in quick actually so they pretty much said that priorities you do in your application layer handle uh, priorities um, and then recently there's been a big debate on how to do HTTP3 because HTTP3 then being the application layer on top of quick so, but recently there's been a big debate about how to do HTTP3 priorities. Should we do it like we did it with HTTP2? And there's been a big backlash because HTTP2 priorities hasn't been a success and is muchly considered uh, not done very well. So there's the priority part. I really, sh really shouldn't say a lot about it because it hasn't really landed. It's been being debated right now. So we'll see what happens with priorities with the quick and HTTP3. Um, it'll, be, it'll be interesting. I think it'll be simpler 
um, than it was with H2. But yeah, we'll have to just keep an eye on, on the priority part. Um, what is what would might be interesting is then of course quick being a completely separate protocol than, than TCP so of course quick also has congestion control and everything right so um, there will be there will be times when you run quick connections and TCP connections over the same network right so they they are actually designed to be fair you it is not supposed to eat up everything that uh, the network uh, um, provides you mean so that if you do TCP connections and quick connections next to each other, the, the quick ones shouldn't eat all the bandwidth and starve out the TCP one, even if I think it'll not become 50-50. So quick uses um, quick uses UDP. And and uh, before, I, I'd rather say the question what to do with the default port, because it's not as easy to, as to say that it uses um, port 443 by default even though I think we can say that it might do that, but it's, it's much more complicated. I'll get to that in, 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 a, in a few minutes. So the, the port question and, uh, and how recent they are, I'll get to that too, because they are <laughs> really, really recent. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll get to those questions in a minute. Sure, hang on. So we have, we have the connection, it's done reliable streams or re reliable connections and streams there is done over UDP. Um, right, Th that's quick. Quick is the transport protocol, and then we put HTTP three on top of quick, right? So it's previously we had HTTP two like this. The, I'll show you the previous, and if you see anyone behind me, those are my kids. Uh, so um, you can see the the previous way to do things uh, was to. The HTTP2 stack, you, you had IP, of course, in the bottom. We did TCP, we put TLS on top of that, and that was HTTP2. You really actually didn't have to have TLS 1.2, uh, or you didn't have to have TLS for, for HTTP2, but uh, no, no, no browser did it otherwise, and it's really complicated to not do it over HTTPS on the, across the internet, again, because of ossification. So, um, that's the HTTP2, that's the old classic stack, We've, we're, we're used to that, right? Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of a corridor here because both my kids actually have their rooms on this side. So they're in there and it's, it's still they're still on summer vacation, so both my kids are there and my daughter has some friend here, so they'll be moving behind me to just keep your attention up so you can... You can um, count the number of times they pass behind me. <clears throat> oh, well, uh, okay, so, but, okay, that's the HTTP2 stack on the left here and on the right. So we have the IP, we put UDP over that because as I said, we don't introduce a new protocol there. And then we put the quick stack on top of UDP. Quick uses TLS 1.3 for encryption and security. I'll get into a little bit more TLS details soon because it has some fun or maybe not fun but um, it, it affects us as us as in uh, curl hackers so I'll, I'll get back to that little part a bit more so on top of quick then so quick is a transport protocol so um, it is designed to allow whatever to use quick as a transport protocol just as whatever can use TCP for connecting to things out there, but um, a pr very early on when Quick was the Quick Working Group was started in, in the ITF, it was decided that HTTP was the primary protocol. So focus on HTTP, uh, save all other application protocols for later. So HTTP three is done over Quick using TLS over UDP on IP. As you can see, then quite different stacks here. I, I decided to make them purple, the old pro protocols, and, and the yellow one are the new ones, basically. TLS 1.3 is not new for this, but it's semi-new because we had to change TLS, or uh, not actually change TLS, but all basically all TLS libraries that we use for TLS in Quick had has been changed or will be changed or have has to be changed. Okay, I'll get back to that. So the two stacks but 
those are the two stacks and how they differ. If, if we look at sort of all the top layer, or, or, um, the HTTP functionality wise, the HTTP features are very similar. HTTP 3 offers pretty much the same features as HTTP 2. So they don't differ much in, in um, what you can do with the with HTTP protocol there. They're, they're sending uh, you know, requests and headers and they get responses and you get bodies and everything and, and they have header compressions, different header compressions, but there's very similar header compressions and so on. So, and they also feature push the same way. So um, they're very similar apart from the fact that HTTP 3 is over quick and HTTP 2 is over TCP. And the, the fact that HTTP 3 uses quick makes it faster to set up connections and, and uh, a few other th things, but it's not really HTTP features. Okay, so that's the difference between the stacks. And now back to the point of um, default port, UDP, everything, right? <clears throat> and do feel free to uh, ask me more questions. I love questions. It makes me know that I'm actually talking about things uh, you actually care about. So. HTTPS, you know, your URLs, HTTPS colon slash slash blah, 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 blah. It's everywhere. And what does it mean? HTTPS is TCP, right? I mean, the URLs that you use everywhere, it has been TCP and TLS, but TCP based since uh, HTTPS was introduced a long time ago in the 90s. So what, do you, what does it mean when, when we have a HPS code on somewhere? How do we switch that into quick, which, is, which uses UDP? So if you see a HPS colon host name, uh, colon port number, can you just try that for uh, the UDP host? Uh, so the, the UDP port number instead of the TCP port number? Mm, not necessarily, right? So <clears throat> we can't change HPS URLs because they're everywhere and they're, we're stuck with them and, and nobody in their sane mind has actually <laughs> provided any other way to do this because we, we realize that we can't introduce, we, I mean, one way would be to introduce a new scheme, right? Quick colon or HTTP three colon blah, 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 or something, something. But no, we don't do that. And <clears throat> the default way to set up an HTTPS colon slash slash, that's a TCP with TLS on TCP port 443 by default then if you don't specify the port number in the URL. So how do you get to quick then, right? Quick being UDP, using the UDP port number space then. This is how you do it according to the spec. Um, this service over there, there, no, there, sorry, I'm, I'm um, so, uh, <coughs> there's an alt service response header. So basically you have to connect to the HTTPS site being on TCP and TLS, so it's uh, HTTP 1 or 2, and it responds with an alt service header, hello, I'm over there, or there. Um, my, uh, my OR origin is also available on this host, this port number using this protocol. The old service header wasn't designed for um, HTTP 3, it was actually defined in the HTTP 2 time frame. So uh, it's more of a generic way to say that this site is also available in another place for another for, for a period of time. So <clears throat> the, the standard way or, or the prescribed way to do this is say, you set up your site and you say, whoa, my HTTP 3 alternative is over here um, for this number of seconds into the future, which could then be, you know, for a year into the future or two years or... <clears throat> so yeah, you have to have an HTTPS site too, right? Because uh, first, HTTP, first HTTP 3 will only be HTTPS because it's encrypted and secure, and all servers will also only be trusted over HTTPS. Um, so, um, and, and uh, yes, you if you want to be compatible with older uh, clients, right, who, who don't speak HTTP 3, you still want HTTPS 
uh, speaking the older HTTP protocols for the older uh, clients. So it's actually a pretty decent way to upgrade into the HTTP three. So you have one, you remain one, you have your origin to support bootstrapping and all the older clients. The same origin, that's an assumption done by the browser or the client, right? But I mean, it's not only sort of an assumption, it's it's how this product alt service setup protocol is set up because alt service actually is so say if you have you have your example.com site and you have set up an HTTP three site and you have that on uh, uh, funky site.com you will still even when you say alt service is over there on the funky site.com it will still send the original host header and and uh, everything and assume that you're having the certificate for the original host name and everything on the alternative place. So it's actually not only a, an assumption, you actually have to set up the alternative to support this concept. You can't just sort of point out the random server and say, oh, that's me, because that's other server has to cooperate here. You, have, you both have to agree that you are the same origin. Um, uh, well, the default for all service is 24 hours max age time. So by default, if you don't say anything else, it'll be cached by the client. No, it should be cached by the client in 24, for 24 hours by default. But uh, ideally, I would say that um, people running HP3 sites would announce alternatives for longer than 24 hours because uh, I think so. <clears throat> um, Preload lists, maybe we will have preload lists. I think there are other reasons to consider other ways to find HTTP 3. Um, for example, there's an ongoing, I should possibly, possibly have made a slide for this. There's an ongoing discussion about an, a DNS record called old service something uh, that basically has this information in a DNS record. So presume you, presumably then you can uh, just look up in DNS and see if you should try HTTP 3 or not, um, which would be one way to avoid this extra round trip or, or, or stuff like that. There is also the fact, I think, that because this wastes a complete round trip, right? You have to ask uh, the site for, for using the old protocol, and then it says, oh, you can use the new one over there, and then go there. You wait a whole round trip and a load of the page and everything. So I think. There, there will, there will be clients that will just try quick on this host and port number because, I mean, you can try it. It's easy for a client to just try it. Um, so, so I, I think racing HTTP three with HTTP two on the, this port number is going to happen. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to happen because you have many milliseconds to gain in case it works, right? So, uh, so. I'm sure browsers will do that. And not, we have this funny situation. Uh, keep asking, I'll, I'll try to uh, keep up with the questions, ask them in the Twitch chat. But, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get right into this, but you know, uh, HTTP three and quick, it has a fairly high failure rate because of firewalls and, and different networks surroundings everywhere. So all clients or all browsers at least they will have a fairly uh, advanced fallback system the quick connection doesn't work go back to use the hp2 or hp1 even in case the quick version doesn't work so going in in the browser world the browser should always always try to set up the hp3 connection in the background and use the older one until the new one works okay that that'll, that'll make it transparent and you as a user won't really notice when the upgrade happens but say then you you get an HTTP 3 connection up and running and you're watching your, your funny cat videos on, on your favorite video site, you put your laptop down, close the lid and you bring your laptop to your favorite coffee shop, open it up again and you want to continue looking at your cat video. Then your browser will connect to that HTTP 3 site again, right? Because it will resume where it was. But since uh, HTTP 3 has a, such a high uh, failure rate, it might not succeed, right? Because in uh, X percent of all the cases, the, H the quick connection will be blocked. So I'm pretty sure that in that case, the browsers will raise the older connection and the older HP uh, attempt with the HP three attempt. 
So in that case, it'll raise them anyway. So I think we'll end up in a, in a situation where we will do connection raising uh, for, for quick and TCP, no matter what we say in the specs. But uh, I'm sort of running a little bit ahead of my time here because this isn't really sure yet and we haven't really seen how this develops, but I think it'll happen. So uh, the comparison to the SRV records is really a fit, yes, because it's very similar to SRV records, but uh, the old service records is much more dedicated and, and crafted for use with HTTP and for this particular purpose. So if you look at there's if you look at the uh, spec for, for there's a draft for the old service DNS header record, it actually mentions why SRV records isn't good enough for this. <clears throat> so there's an ongoing dis discussion there. Um, we'll see what happens with that. It'll be interesting. Yeah, it's actually, so if we get the old service response header, should we do the request again or should we just be happy with it? I think, um, I'll get back to that, how we do it in curl, but normally I think if you already did the request, you already got the response, it feels like maybe you already got the response, right? Is it really worth killing the connection and re, uh, re-attempt it over quick? So no, I think in most cases, you will just be happy with the response you get and save the HTTP3 info for the next connection. Uh, I think that makes the most sense if, if you're after performance, not if you're after going HTTP3 all the way, but I think in most cases, if you, if you don't know it's HTTP3, you get the old service, you stick with that connection and the next request you try over HTTP3, which in a, in a browser case, you might have you know images and JavaScript and hundreds of connections. So, so one over TCP and 99 every quick, I think that's fine. As I mentioned before, so, so quick is a transport protocol. So um, the, the DNS over plain quick is also an option. There's this, you know, DNS over HTTPS is one protocol. And when it, that HTTPS becomes HTTP3, you get DNS over HTTPS, which is then based on Quick over UDP. So you're coming back to UDP in that regard. Um, but also, there's also discussions about uh, the, as soon as Quick V1 has shipped, and I'll get back to when it will ship or might ship. Um, there's also discussion about introducing unreliable streams to Quick. So there's a pretty strong desire to do that, which is also interesting because introducing unreliable streams into quick makes it going back to something UDP like, right? So it's like doing unreliable streams over quick that is using, using UDP. <clears throat> I think in the, the, the reason why they're in, people are interested in introducing unreliable streams in Quick is that you can then mix both reliable and unreliable within the same connection, which I, as I understand it is fairly common, for example, within games. You can set up one connection and you can have one uh, unreliable stream for, for audio or video, and you can have the reliable streams for other more important data. Apparently a lot of games, for example, is already made like that, but you don't use Quick and you don't do other protocols so and using one connection is is much better for congestion control and other reasons <clears throat> uh, okay all service and um, over there I have my HTTP 3 server connect to that instead <clears throat> but okay as if that wasn't enough then so I just want to I've addressed a bunch of these already so I just wanted to mention uh, so I'm already been going on for half an hour so I was I was supposed to go get into curl stuff so somewhere around three to seven percent of all quick attempts fail because of infrastructure or something it's hard to tell why quick connections fail right if you're you as a client or and as a server if you you can know that a connection fails you can't get a you can't establish a handshake so something prevents it from happening um, it's hard to tell exactly why 
there's also, I think, there's a gray area where uh, there's a bandwidth throttling of UDP traffic, so which is also fairly common. So which is then also might make quick worse than TCP if your network just makes UDP slow. It's harder to detect, it's harder to fall back from. So due to this fairly excessive uh, fail rate, we, clients will need fallback algorithms for a long time, which is both a curse and a blessing. Uh, because uh, it's a curse because it makes it sort of easy or cheap for networks to block quick if, if, if they just don't want your clients to do quick they can just block it and your clients will fall back and use the older versions which is then less encrypted and, and can't develop as much as quick and it's also right now and for the foreseeable future very cpu intensive because of uh, much less uh, hardware offloading, much uh, unoptimized uh, software stacks, and uh, a lot of encryption everywhere all the time. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, ironically, then the U uh, UDP stacks in, in, in Linux, then and, and Linux being the primary server platform there, it's very it's still unoptimized, which also leaves leaves room for getting further improvements going forward. UDP really has never been used to this extent on the internet for, for high speed traffic before. So people haven't really given UDP stacks that attention that it is getting now. So I'm sure I'm sure it'll be better over time, but this is how, how it is right now. <clears throat> and we have this funny TLS layer. TLS is not a new protocol, right? TLS 1.3 is fairly new, but um, most TLS libraries that, that are in use today actually support TLS 1.3, so that is not the problem here. But when when Quick was designed, they changed how you use TLS because TLS was designed to be used over TCP. And TCP is a transport layer in itself, right? So it, it was made as a um, layer on top of a transport layer. So, but they figured out that it wasn't really ideal for for use within Quick. <clears throat> so they changed how you use how you use TLS. So basically, you get you get the records out from instead of sending. Well, actually, you, you you're not sending records as you do over TLS. You're sending the messages that are within. They actually exist within the messages. So you have to get the extract, extract the messages and send them out. And you also have to extract a few more secrets that you don't need to extract <clears throat> for regular TLS over TCP. And th this is important because TLS libraries <clears throat> didn't have APIs for this because nobody used TLS like this because it, there was no point in doing that. So. Two years ago, three years ago, no TLS libraries had API for this. You can you do this with any TLS library. So during the work with Quick, people have started to adapt and, and change t all the TLS libraries to be able to provide these new APIs. Fun. I'll get back to that in, in a moment. Uh, there's also a challenge then that all Quick stacks are user land. So we have to, you know, get the libraries, uh, install them, and you have to run them. And there are multiple ones. They are developed independently. You will have uh, all, if you run <coughs> X clients on your system, they're all using Quick or HP3. You know that they will be using different uh, libraries and implementations. And, and it'll be a fun debugging situation going forward when stuff don't work. It also... It also sometimes is brought up as a, as a challenge because it also allows or encourages that you, you can easily tweak your uh, quick uh, communication to possibly like be more aggressive, right? I can store out the other connections on your network by just retransmitting faster or being just more aggressive. Maybe I can be get faster transfers for my application on, on the price that the others starve out, but that's good for my application, maybe. It is certainly that um, going into a quick world, a lot more is done in user space and in by libraries then and then by 
by, in an extension in by the application like previously you used tcp right in tcp you open a socket and all the tcp magic is is done all the tcp magic is done in the kernel right so that's out of the application scope now that magic is moved into the application through the quick and hp3 libraries so yes a lot more complication and, and quick in HTTP 3 is there by extension also I would say much more complicated than HTTP 2 was right HTTP 2 was just a way of handling but you still used TCP for everything so you'd still hand that out to the kernel now uh, that is uh, um, in your application or in your ser uh, well, server or a client or server You could certainly imagine that over time, I'm sure op application, uh, sorry, sorry. I'm sure that operating systems will support this and offer it. And, and I mean, maybe not get it into the kernel, but at least provide official operating system APIs and stuff like that. So of course, over time, I think the situation will improve and it'll be better. And it is not um, a lot of people in, in the protocol world these days in the transport, uh, uh, fans talk about a post TCP world so maybe you sh we should see quick as the replacement for quick in the long term right what happens in 10 years 20 years so maybe if right now everything is a little bit uh, shaky and, and, and uh, like uncertain and, and vague what ha will happen but given time I'm sure everything will be better and we will adapt and, and things will mature and we will figure it out how to do it UDP magic. I mean, well, the UDP stack is still in the kernel, right? Yes. So, so pretty much what Quick does is put the packages ready in UDP uh, and, and use a UDP socket and send and receive everything as UDP traffic through the kernel. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, all these challenges, I'm, I'm not actually saying that they are preventing HTTP 3 long term I'm, I'm saying they are challenges because they are challenges right now that that are um, like us working with hp3 right now what what are we up to what why why isn't it just a straight way forward into happiness these are the challenges we have short term all of these will work themselves out and, and become better over time i'm, I'm sure of that um we're still on very early days Quick is a full-fledged TCP replacement, right? So it has all those transport protocol things that you need for a transport protocol to have. So congestion control, it takes care of the MTU figuring out. It has uh, pacing and it has retransmission and selective acts and all of that and, and, and more. I'm not, I'm not an expert on transport protocol, so I'm actually, I shouldn't talk too much about the specific details about the quick bits, but you, sh you can easily read up on the, on the, in, in the specs and see everything that is. This is basically uh, taken, well, almost 40 years of experience with TCP. What's good with TCP? What's bad with TCP? What, it, what do you do? What do you need to do to do good protocol today in 2019? But it started a few years ago, but still, what, what do you need to do to make a good transport protocol today? So everything that is good from TCP is brought in to quick and everything that was never possible to fix in TCP is now attempted to get fixed in quick, right? So it's ideally and hopefully it'll become a better, or it'll be the TCP too that never happens, right? So yeah, the, the plan or the hope or the vision or, or something, or maybe the scare, depending on your point of view, is that quick will take over as a, a transport protocol going forward. So maybe we will see less TCP going forward, more quick if things work the way uh, many people hope and wishes and, and, and are actually working really hard to, to achieve. Um, so there's also um, trying to advance my <laughs> slides here. 45 minutes and I haven't uh, uh, gotten to curl yet. So there's also this lack of tooling. Yes, you can, if you build Wireshark from, uh, from Git right now, from the Git master, and uh, you, you get 
pretty good uh, quick and HTTP3 support, I believe. You can also use the SSL, uh, this log key, what's the, the environment variable to extra extract secrets so that you can actually analyze the traffic live. So that works and it supposedly works even with curls HTTP3. So yeah, but it's still a lack of tooling and, and going to, into a quick world is also, I think it's a, it's a, it's a different mindset, right? You, you, we're used to talking about uh, TCP stuff like uh, windowing and sequence numbers and stuff like that. And all of that is gone now because now we're into a quick world where everything is encrypted and everything is different. And quick, I, I'm not, I've not addressed this much, uh, very many particularly quick details here, but quick is a little different in a few interesting areas that, that it'll be fun to get into. <clears throat> I'll get back to the question about curl and, and quick and a split from HP3 um, in, in a second because I just wanted to highlight this little uh, gem out of the if you if you go to the quick working the, uh, quick and HTTP3 are both designed by the quick working group within the IETF uh, and the I the quick working group has a charter and it says that they sh uh, the quick and HTTP specifications should ship in July 2019 and if you're looking at the calendar right now you can see that July 2019 uh, we passed that so <laughs> I'm still very eager to see uh, how this is going to be updated and uh, I'm <laughs> they already updated it twice so they're already late for updating it so mm, it's going to say another optimistic date soon I'm sure uh, so the question remains, when will this ship uh, as the, I mean, this specification, there's an interim meeting in Los, uh, in California in, in a month time. So <clears throat> we'll see about that. I think it's going to be discussed there and there will be another date. And I'm, I'm thinking maybe early 2020, because I think they're still optimistic and uh, there are still discussions going on for this. So, hmm. Let's hope for early 2020. I've, I've talked about HP3 for a long time by now, and I've updated this ship date many times already. And I said, "Ooh, maybe, maybe already early 2019, maybe summer 2019, maybe." So yeah, I don't know. There, there are, are a lot of strong wills and and a, lot, a desire to get everything right. So I suppose getting things right is better than getting things out early. So. I think it'll it'll take a while longer. <clears throat> HTTP three is still a draft, and Quick is still a draft too, right? So there are they are on a draft twenty two for the Quick protocol and the HTTP three protocol. So pretty much when we're talking about Quick and HTTP three right now, we're talking about draft twenty two. So that's current state of the art it'll be another draft in, in a few weeks or so in a month or so but uh, so yes they're all uh, in progress they're all drafts they're not the final versions but there's a, a big community of uh, implementers there are uh, i don't have the list near me but there i think there may be 15 quick stack implementations that are fairly up to date that mostly interop with each other. So there are many implementations here and there are the authors and creators of these uh, stacks. There are, they're sort of champion this every day and keeping things that uh, interrupting, working and polishing the spec sort of hand in hand. So it goes, um, It's that, that's a very important part of pro developing a protocol, right? Making sure that it actually works to implement and, and works in, in the real world. So. It goes hand in hand there. People are working on the implementations and the draft in the same time. So, so then we find out problems, we polish the draft and everyone updates their codes and we try to interrupt again and we blah, blah, blah. And it goes like that and up and up and up and up. So hopefully, or ideally, and actually that's the way it works right now that the changes in the drafts become smaller and smaller over time when it's ten things are proven in the implementations and it works and so on. So we're moving on and that's why also I think there are diminishing returns now for changes in the specs. We should, there are, I don't think there will be any major changes, uh, not in the quick specs at least. There should be three specs were 
worked on a little bit later than the quick ones but i mean it's kind of natural since quick uh, hp3 is on top quick but it's still uh, going uh, coming closer so okay 50 minutes and we're getting to curl building curl with hp3 support i i've been wanting to get curl uh, to support hp3 for a pretty long time it hasn't really uh, I haven't really been able to get the time and energy to do it, and, and but uh, I think it was uh, last week I landed it properly. I did my first HP3 requests, and uh, so it's pretty fresh in the code and it's pretty fresh for me. And uh, there are plenty of uh, opportunities to crash and burn here. So, how to do this? I wanted to show you so that you can. Uh, follow along and play with it and experiment the way you feel like it and i just wanted to emphasize that uh, it's fun and uh, your help is appreciated there are this is early days here and this is the days where we figure things out and, and do things and, and there we need to do again it's important to be i think it's pretty important to be fairly early on with this so that we can try out things does it work to do this should we do it like that way and and being fairly early with the protocol here, we can also help out by, by landing code now, we can build a tool that can help out server implementers. They can run curl against their uh, quick uh, and HP3 servers to try out how to do things. So right starting now, curl becomes a, a fun tool for server implementers and HP3 implementers in general to, to verify things. So we can verify each other sort of hand in hand going forward. Both HTTP3 and Quick supporting curl is considered experimental, and experimental is basically just a tag that we set for or mark in the documentation in code that says that we might change it. We don't promise ABI or API compatibility, compatibility for anything in here, uh, really, so don't rely on it in production. It is disabled by default in, in builds, so you have to explicitly enable it in the builds. So it's experimental. We will change it going forward. Um, I've already changed it actually, so just to prove that. Um, sometimes um, it is hard to know beforehand exactly how to do things. So it's it's actually a pretty. I think it's a pretty good uh, safety measure here to say that it is experimental. We we can actually experiment with it a bit. And experiments as in try out things. If it doesn't work, we can actually backpedal from some of the things as long as we keep those things contained within the uh, experimental parts, the HTTP3 and quick parts. The code is mostly in Git master, <clears throat> mostly because I, there's are, there are also pull requests. I have a, the most important pull request right now is that I, I fixed the happy eyeballs connecting. I'll get back to that. So. We're in we're in Git Master now, so if you want to play out and, and play and want to toy HP3 and Quick with curl, just dive in, clone Git Master, build it, run it. I'll show you how. So um, that's it. Um, this is going to ship, and sh by shipping, I mean being included in the tarball. It's, it's again, it's experimental. It's going to be disabled by default in the build, so nobody will build this uh, on, uh, on accident or by accident. You'll actually have to explicitly say, please enable HTTP uh, 3 support and please enable whatever you want that it otherwise is experimental. <clears throat> so go ahead, uh, uh, please ask questions in the chat if there are any. So how to build curl to do HTTP 3. Also very, very new and fresh, but, oops, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. Build curl, okay. <clears throat> we, of course, then, we rely on third party libraries for low level, and, and as I talked to you about, uh, talked to you already, um, quick libraries and HTTP3 libraries, there are, pl there are plenty full, and they're also all being experiments pretty much because they're all using dr supporting draft versions of the protocols and there are fairly co complicated protocols at least quick actually uh, possibly HTTP 3 became less complicated than, than HTTP 2 because 
HP3 has now streaming, right? Because the streams are provided by Quick. So doing streams now is, is pretty much easier uh, from an application protocol. But since Quick now has them instead, Quick itself is fairly protocol. Bleh. Bleh. Fairly complicated. Um, so yeah, so we need a third party library or two to, to provide Quick and HTTP3 support. That's just the way we did We did it same with HTTP2 because HTTP2 was also fairly complicated in comparison to HTTP1. So we rely on a third party. Someone else who make the library, the libraries for those protocols are used by other servers and clients and everything. So it, it makes it um, really good actually. And we already now have a selectable backend, so you can actually select which quick backend you want to build uh, curl to use. It's not really uh, an ultimate goal for me to support many quick backends, but uh, it's a more of a means to an end because in this case it turned out that we happened to get a get a patch that added support for a second library while I was working on supporting the first library. And then, uh, well, in order to help the community better, to, to try out different things, oh, I added support for both. It really wasn't that complicated. So now we can use either or, or of these libraries. I'll, I'll show them in a minute. So, easy peasy, selectable backend. You need to, at build time, select which library to use. And the libraries we use right now, uh, are the quiche library from Cloudflare and the, or the NGTCP2 library from the NGTCP2 team. Um, and it's actually slightly more complicated than that because NGTCP2 is just a quick library. So NGTCP2 needs an HTTP3 library on top of it. So then there we're using the NGHTP3 library. So, okay, those two, but there we call them quiche and NGTCP2 because those are the quick libraries. <coughs> Going back to TLS, I mentioned the, <clears throat> the funny TLS uh, situation. <clears throat> um, both these, and th th this is also another reason to actually support more than one backend, right? Because these libraries have different TLS requirements. The TLS API situation I mentioned that um, in, in the quiche case, case they use boring SSL and NGTCP2 case they're using a patched open SSL version. <clears throat> so depending on your your flavor and, and religion you may go with one of these depending on that sort of um, dependency. Um, do I think quick supporting unreliable streams similar to UDP might mean that browsers supporting them. I mean, increase the odds of. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I'm not sure, I don't know. I, I, I think that uh, the browsers are one of the, pr I mean, they are the primary use. <laughs> the use case for quick and HTTP3 is pretty much focused on the browser use case, right? So I think the browsers are going to be uh, the early users and early uh, of, of HTTP3. So I think going quick, the browsers are going to be there. <coughs> uh, they're not really there right now. For some reason, there's no, there, there is no browser for us to download and try HTTP3 right now, I think, which is, I think is a bit of a disappointment that they are not faster. So, uh, but anyway, so uh, I'm sure that uh, there's also this discussion about using quick and, and, and uh, like those unreliable, unreliable streams as a replacement for WebRTC and stuff like that. And WebRTC is certainly a browser thing. So we'll see. <clears throat> I really cannot foresee what the browsers will or will not do. Um, and as you know, I don't work for any browser company since a while back. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, right, um, back to the TLS library uh, selection is actually, I'm not sure it's actually even possible to build curl and the 
quick libraries with different libraries. Since, since if you build quiche that uses boring, then you rather you preferably be also build curl with that same boring uh, SSL library and vice versa with ngtcp2. If you build tcp2 or with tcp2, which uses a patched OpenSSL, you better use that OpenSSL version when you build curl as well, so that they use the same. Because since boring and OpenSSL, I mean, boring is a fork of open, right? So they use a lot of similar symbols. So if you try to link with both of them in the same curl build, uh, I think it leads to tears and unhappiness. And I, someone mentioned it. I haven't actually tried it. And I, uh, this is a reason why, why <laughs> it'll take a while until we ship this because this TLS situation is a yucky. So that's, they have different TLS requirements and, and that's good to know. Uh, and they're also, they're also very different uh, libraries. They have very different uh, APIs. Quiche has both Quick and HTTP3. NGTSB2 only has Quick. Uh, NGTSB2 is very callback oriented. Quiche, Quiche is not. NGTSB2 is designed as um, being TLS library independent. So a lot of TLS magic goo is done by us to support it so uh, it's actually they're very different yeah and now <laughs> i think chrome has quick someone mentioned so yes let me just for a brief moment i didn't really want to get into this but google made quick in 2013 right google quick was has been around for a very long time. They've used Quick, the Google Quick for a long time. They've had it in, in Chrome and they supported it in their web uh, ends for, for many years. So if you used Chrome and you did YouTube or whatever Google thing you do, you've used Quick for a long time. But that was Google Quick. <clears throat> Google Quick was the foundation for what was brought into the IETF when IETF Quick was made. So the Google Quick is not the same as the IETF Quick. So the primary Quick you see in Chrome is done is the Google Quick and the Google Quick is going away slowly and the IETF Quick is what I'm talking about here and that is what we're I'm concerned of uh, that's what I care about uh, Google Quick is going to be a uh, historic reference going forward so I, I'm not actually sure exactly what Google's uh, implementation status is for for doing full IETF uh, Quick and HP3 but I, I'm sure I'm, I know that they they have said uh, that they have it in in-house, uh, so they have sort of one browser that you can actually use, at least they can use it. And I know that the Safari people at Apple, they have also said it. So I've, I've been wa uh, wanting and longing for, for the first one of those to actually ship a beta version so that we can try it out for real for ourselves. I don't think we can do that now, or maybe I've just missed it, but I think that's the case. But we are not using cur uh, Quick as uh, not being a standard. We are we are all pushing and developing Quick now before it's a standard to make sure that we can make it a good standard. So we can't no we can't wait until Quick is done and then do every, all of that because then it'll make a, it'll become a useless standard we, that we can't use. So there's really no this isn't done in any stupid way this is the only way to do a protocol standard we have to develop against the draft versions verify the draft versions play around with it try it and if we figure out wow this is really stupid things in the protocol we need to fix this then we can still we still have time to fix those things in the protocol and this is how protocol standards are made the the better way we need code and and make sure that the protocols work that's that's why this happens and the reason that we have a lot of challenges with HTTP3, that they, that's, they're not stoppers for the protocols. They are challenges. They're not stopping the protocols. They're, I haven't really gone into the reasons why we people do a quick in HTTP3, but it, that's, there are reasons for that, right? Faster connections, lower latency, uh, more encryption so that we can do more future development. So, this is just the beginning of a new phase of, of transport protocols. <clears throat> and of course, the, the possibly the biggest part is that HTTP 3 
built on quick fixes the TP head of line blocking problem. So it'll, it'll be a much better protocol for lossy networks. Um, <clears throat> so, how to build curl to use Kish. Kish is a library designed by developers at Cloudflare. Alessandro Guidini being the main developer there, I believe. So <clears throat> if you head over to that GitHub page, it'll have uh, an instruction uh, that is pretty good. Quiche is written in tada, Rust. So it'll also uh, check off that uh, it's a hype box. It uses Boring SSL. Uh, I think without putting words into their mouths that they are only planning to support boring SSL going forward as well. They, they seem to not intend to support any other library. Uh, <coughs> boring, of course, being the Google library and Google themselves pretty much are not really interested in releasing boring for anyone else the, uh, than to themselves. So they basically say, don't use it but people are using it anyway, but it makes it a really difficult choice for, for us, like shipping curl when, if you want to use curl in, in um, Linux distros, operating systems, blah, 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 uh, going down the boring SSL route is not um, a future-proof way to do it. So then that said, Kish was the first backend I made HTTP3 work with curl um, and, and a few different HTTP3 servers. So it's there, it has a nice API. And if you look at this uh, hp3.md, which um, that's a documentation in the uh, in the curl source tree, you can also look at it here. So um, if you go to there's uh, if if you scroll it down, scroll down a little bit. Um, I'm looking at a, in a text editor here, so it's it's not really it's a markdown file. It's actually more <laughs> browsable in in a browser, <clears throat> but it explains how to build Quiche. It has a, a copy of Boring in itself. So clone Quiche and Boring SSL, build it, and you build it with CMake. No, sorry, you build Boring SSL with CMake. You build, of course, Quiche with Cargo because it's a Rust code. And then you, and this uh, instruction shows you how to clone and build curl using Quiche. So when you build curl to use Quiche, you basically tell it to use the um, the boring SSL library. We point out the boring SSL library, the same SSL library that Quiche is using, and you point out with Quiche the directory to uh, where Quiche is built. And then you run uh, you run configure like that. So and and when you run configure, curls configure like this, it should, in the end, when configure is done, say that HTTP three is enabled, uh, and it uses the quiche backend. <coughs> um, using Rust as a, I mean using a, a Rust library uh, like this in, in curl is really straightforward, and. Uh, um, for me, as for me as a user or or as a builder of curl and libcurl, it doesn't matter that it's built in Rust or not because they provide C headers and everything, and I can just and, and it builds as a library, so I can just well point it out. I don't need to care about it being Rust or C or C plus plus or whatever. I just link with it and, and run with it, and it's fine. So for me as a developer with this. Rust is perfectly fine. I don't need to care about it. I think it'll. Uh, I mean, there's a difference if I if I want to debug it perhaps, and I want to you know set a breakpoint in it and jump into the code because then it's Rust suddenly, not C code that, that as the rest of curl is. And I'm also. I also hearing that it'll be another issue for people that are actually building. If you build your distro, if you want to build keys as a library and ship it in a distro or whatever, um, I think that is also another complication but that, I, I'm not really into that so I really can't comment on that much but I think it becomes a, a different case when you build with shared libraries static libraries and blah blah stuff like that so anyway that's how you build it with quiche 
it's um, it's actually pretty straightforward. <clears throat> uh, I'm also um, again it's early days, so I'm sure that we might have um, screwed up some little details somewhere, or you could actually possibly uh, end up in a sorry place. But do try it out and do ask questions and file bugs if you find anything, because well, this is intended to to actually work, <laughs> or actually build stuff. And, uh, and really build this against the bleeding edge quiche uh, code. So you, you better f uh, clone quiche uh, master branch so that this builds. I think if you just, uh, I mean, surely you build, if you do it now, you, you it'll be okay. <clears throat> but I'm sure that we will try to track their, the, I mean, they're experimental, they're on draft 22 as well. so. I'm sure we will track their footsteps a little bit and see if they fix things we want to try out their updates and so on. Oh, right. I, I forgot about this little detail. I'll, I, I'll get into this. You know, um, I have this HP3 header uh, server over there, pointer, the alt service header. You want to build that to enabled in curl and uh, well, you probably want to. <clears throat> that is also experimental feature. Uh, also because it's not being used very much outside of HP3. So HP3 is really the big um, primary use case for it, for all service, at least all service with curl. So now when when uh, people are actually running um, HP server, servers, I have been able to try out HP, no, sorry, the old service support a little bit, actually found a few bugs and so on. So it was good that it was like this. Um, so now we can actually I'll show you in a second how, how to use it. It's, it's actually pretty straightforward. <clears throat> and to do this same thing then, if you rather not go the quiche way, well, I would say that um, the, the going, the using old service with other protocols like HP1 or HP2, uh, I'm not sure how supported it is but for curl it has never been a sort of a vital functionality since people are pointing out the server they want to use with curl so i think that is one of the primary reasons why not enabling alt service or not having alt service hasn't been a, an issue for people so I, i'm not actually sure how how common it is Alt service was designed as a you know when, when we switched to http2 from http1 we suddenly got much more long long-standing, long-living connections. Previously, when you did load balancing for HTTP, you could basically run Robin all connections between all your load balancer or all your servers, all your load balancers, because all connections were so short-lived that, that it didn't really matter. You could just sort of you know, spread them out randomly. And But going to HTTP 2, connections are going bound to stick around for much longer time, which means load balancing uh, different, because now you can pretty much end up with all the connections on one of your load balancers and on none on the others. So all service is basically a way to hint to the client that maybe you should try me on this other server instead on, on the next attempt so that you, you don't overload this single server. Um, but curl has never really been a user of that. And uh, I've imp the old service supporting curl is also fairly new it's less than a year at least and since nobody really thought it really vital i don't think a lot of users have used it so it's pretty much untested and, and uh, early days for that as well <clears throat> but okay so you want to have old service support and you if, if you can build it with key support and you can build it with ngtcp2 and if you build it with ngtcp2 we have this added complexity that you also need ngt ng http3 all libraries with very easy pronounceable names <clears throat> and if you then go this route you go to that um, github page and that github page ngtcp2 ngtcp3 that's the uh, the quick library and the http3 library and back again to the tls uh, api funny monkey business you use a custom patched OpenSSL because OpenSSL doesn't provide the APIs to allow us to do quick. So we need to extract and provide more functionality 
from OpenSSL than it does uh, on itself. So yeah, you use if you want to do the, if you want to go the NGTCP2 route, you you get these libraries. You build his patched his him being Tatsuhiro being the main author behind these two libraries. Uh, so you get that patched library that provides the necessary APIs. And again, you can look at the the HP3.md uh, file, which describes how to build um, the NGTCP2 version. Here again, being the editor version. So you start out building the patched OpenSSL. You clone it from his. He has a draft 22 version. Blah blah blah. You build it. That's a OpenSSL. You need to enable TLS 1.3 in the build there. And you install it, you build ngHttp3 like this, clone it, build it, enable lib only, yeah, and then install it. And then step three, you build ngTCP2 being the quick library. And the quick library um, no. in here, you actually have to point out the directory to the HTTP3 library. I wonder why you have to do that. Okay, but uh, that's the instruction. And um, finally, once you have all those three libraries in place, the patched OpenSSL, NGTCP2, NGHTP3, you build curl. You clone curl, or you already have it cloned. You run build conf if you want to generate the configure script. And then you run configure, you point out the patched OpenSSL version, the NGHP3 version and the NGTCP2 version. It's, this sounds complicated, but it's not really as complicated as it sounds. You just have to be sure, step by step, get them, get them done. And when you run configure like this, in, in this example here uh, that I've written, it uses these uh, LD flags magic to make sure that it actually builds curl with a fixed path to the open SSL library that you, the, the patched OpenSSL library. Because I mean, in, usually you have a, a, a lot of different, <laughs> I have a lot of different OpenSSL libraries oh. installed. So I just oh wanted to God. make sure that this uses the correct uh, OpenSSL library uh, at, at all the time. <clears throat> okay, so when you've done that, you, when you're on configure, you can see that um, it'll have HTTP3 support enabled and it'll say that it's based on NGTCP2 and NGTCP3. And then you may run make and buy them. It will build and everything will be fine and dandy. If you have problems, um, let me know. And if you have bugs, uh, file them. <clears throat> that is true. Windows support for all this. That's a, that's a very, that's a good question. Um, as you might have guessed by now, I'm not the Windows user and not a Windows developer. So, uh, the Windows support for all this is a bit uh, even earlier days, I should say. <laughs> I'm sh I, I'm, I mean, of course I wanna get it there. I wanna make sure that if this works, all of these, this should work and sh I long should work just as well on Windows. There's nothing in here that prevents it from working on Windows, but there are going to be details here that are not going to be polished for Windows yet. So yeah, I, I will certainly appreciate help if anyone is interested in actually doing the, going through some build uh, obstacles to get this working on Windows. I think that'll be appreciated because I think there will be a bunch of users wanting to run this and test experiment on Windows as well. Um, <clears throat> And again, you probably want to enable old service support when you build this. Uh, enabling old service support is also a, a matter of adding a configure switch. Enable old service is the magic keyword. And it also says in the end of the configure run, it'll say if it's enabled or disabled. So you just make sure that it is the state you want it to be. <clears throat> So then emphasize the, the, the TLS APIs for Quake that we use or, or the situation in the in the curl, curl camp. So Quake uses TLS 1.3 crypto, as I mentioned before, but in a different way. And one second, scratching my own itch here. Um, 
It, it, so it uses TLS differently than TCP uses TLS, which means that it needs an, uh, a set of different APIs that the uh, regular old style TLS libraries don't provide. So NGTCP2 uses this patched OpenSSL to get that API. According to Tatsuhiro, uh, he says that his API is done in a patchy way, or uh, I, don't, I don't remember the words he used, but he, he basically said that he doesn't believe that his way of doing this is going to be adapt, adopted by the OpenSSL project themselves. So it's basically a temporary means to get, get to accept, get to use OpenSSL for this. <coughs> uh, and that is his uh, tree for for his patched OpenSSL version. It's, it's, I think it's one or two patches on top of the regular OpenSSL tree. So it's, it's not a lot of magic, it's, but it's a, a chunky single patch on top of that required if you want to use NGTCP2 <coughs> with curl. You can, since NGTCP2 is actually TLS library independent, you can actually work that out yourself if you prefer to. But it's a lot of magic there that's complicated. I say, maybe you can do it. Maybe it's just me being slow. So boring SSL then. Re I rep re repeat myself a little bit here. Boring SSL is a fork of OpenSSL, as you all know. And boring SSL is done by Google and they already have an API for all this quick magic. <clears throat> so if you clone and use boring SSL from their Git master, you have this API already. You don't have to patch anything. You can just go with it. But then you have boring instead of open. That might be what you want or not. So the road to getting this into OpenSSL, I think this is a subject in itself that uh, is of course going to hamper the adoption of Quick and HP3 since right now, I mean, if you, if you install the Linux distro or you run Mac or you run Windows, there's not a single available shipped TLS library that support these quick APIs. So I think that's a pretty fundamental stumbling block right for adoption for this for this protocol. So OpenSSL has this in the OpenSSL project someone who his name is Todd Short I think uh, provided a pull request this 8797 if you're interested in the in the OpenSSL um, GitHub repo. It provides this in the pull request that adds the an API to OpenSSL that is similar, identical, well, inspired by the same as the, or the boring one. So presumably if they work it out or work out all the quirks and details and questions in this pull request, OpenSSL will get an API for this, well, a set of APIs. For, the, for this functionality that is the same or similar as the boring SSL one, <coughs> which is then different than the one NGTCP2 uses, the one that is uh, in purple here. That's the pull request for OpenSSL if you want to read up on, the, on that. And I know that Tatsuhiro is discussing in that pull request with Todd, the author of that pull request, together with the other OpenSSL uh, team ones. Yeah. On how to do it. So uh, uh, I'm actually pretty happy that it's actually finally, I would say, uh, is, uh, is progress on, on quick API discussions and, and development for OpenSSL because when we ship in 2015, in May 2015, we shipped the specification called HTTP2 RFC 7540. And but at that time, one huge obstacle in, in deploying. HTTP2 servers everywhere was the fact that OpenSSL didn't ship ALPM support by default in in the in all the distros and and, and you know the, the most commonly used OpenSSL version. It what it existed in the in the in the latest version, but not in the most commonly used version. In this case, we're talking about creating a protocol and shipping it without OpenSSL not even having an API, not even landed in Git. So it's It'll take a while until this API ends up in popular Linux distros and then can be used for, for quick clients and servers. So uh, we're, we're ways away from, from that. And that's uh, certainly a huge obstacle. So yeah, and then 
people ask me about, yeah, but curl supports like 11 different TLS libraries for, for HTTPS and, and other SSL related protocols, right? So, but how, so how will we support quick with all these TLS libraries? And, and the straight answer there is pretty much that no, we won't. If you wanna, if you wanna build curl, you, you need to build curl with one of the TLS libraries that have the necessary APIs to do quick, which in this current situation then is one of, <laughs> is a, a rather small selection and none of them being uh, right now long-term choices. So right now is a bit of a mishmash situation, but I'm, I'm, I'm choosing to, to look for the long term here and say that we will work out those details. We're going forward now with these uh, Mishimashi versions and, and, and uh, options and we will work it out as we go along and we can still work out the protocols, we can still work out a lot of things and then these problems will, we will work on them in parallel with all, uh, all the rest. Okay, so that took me like uh, 85 minutes. <clears throat> to reach using curl with HTTP3. HTTP <clears throat> if you did all this, if you clone curl and you clone the TLS libraries and blah, 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 you build everything, you can actually use HTTP3. And as I did, we did with HTTP2, I intend and I work on HTTP3 to make it look like HTTP1. And, it, and, and uh, what do you mean? What do I mean with this? I mean that when you see headers or anything HTTP like with the curl tool and even with the curl library, they will appear as HTTP one headers and, and things. So if you you can set headers, you know you set a header, you can see the headers come back and they will look like header blah 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 colon value in the same manner as you've always seen headers in the HTTP one style. Since HTTP2 introduced header compression, they're not actually sent like that over the wire, right? They, they're actually compressed and binary and magic. So you don't actually see them like that ever, um, possibly. And the same goes with HTTP3. So they're not actually sent that way over the wire, but I decided to, in order to, in order to maintain API and to, to make the user sort of feel at home, I make I make it sound and seem seem like the headers and everything work the same way. So um, yeah, you can pretend that the headers are the same as they were before with HTTP two and HTTP one. They're not, but we pretend that and we translate everything back and forth internally to make them look like uh, regular headers. And that's really convenient because even internally it makes our header parsers and header generators and everything they're the same and then we convert to the specific HTTP version uh, on the fly. This is actually uh, pretty nice since it's then uh, it's a good step towards supporting all the funky HTTP stuff over HTTP 3 already from when I got the transfers going we could support all those fun, fun uh, HTTP headers already without um, much ado. So you run curl like this. This is really not complicated. And in, in line with how you do curl in general, we add command line uh, options, right? I think we're on 225 command line options um, in this coming release. We're adding four new ones in the in this release, uh, in the pending one. 7.66.0. Uh, so if you use curl dash dash HTTP 3, it forces curl to try quick and HTTP3 on a given host name. Someone asked before here in, in the Twitch chat if uh, if curl will support quick separated from HTTP3. And uh, um, the, the plain answer there is no, because curl doesn't support TCP separated from the transport protocol either. They're not curl is a transport tool and a transport library it supports transport protocols transfer protocols that you specify with a url up and down uh, and you don't do that with quick quick isn't a transport protocol well actually it is a transport protocol but it's not um, it's not the application protocol layer that we're using with curl and, and libcurl so if if you can specify it with a url 
it is Curl's business. If you can't do it with a URL, it's not really Curl's business. So a quick transfer, plain quick with Curl, mm, I, th I, I think it's a stretch. I don't think it's Curl's job to do that. So uh, I don't see it uh, in, in our future. HTTP3, dash dash HTTP3 makes Curl forcibly try quick on that host name and port number, you know, without doing the old service dance. <clears throat> Well, will I do the quick support only for curl, libcurl? I don't think so because, again, there's no URL for quick only, right? What, what would a what would curl, libcurl do for just quick? Just quick, there are a bunch of quick libraries instead. You would rather just use quick and do your application using one of those. Mm, I don't think, I don't think you'll get a good use of libcurl by using by going quick only. So no, I don't think so. I, I'm, I never, I'll never say never completely. But I, right now, I don't, I don't see the use case. I don't see the, I don't, I don't think it matches curls um, model very good. When you do dash dash HTTP three, there's no fallback. It'll try, uh, it'll try quick on this port number, and uh, fail if you're if you're not running a quick server there. <coughs> Uh, I'll show you how to do this in libcurl in just a second, and yes, it is that easy. But I would say I, I will just preface this by saying that this is this has no fallback. You can um, right now. I'm I'm not sure it will end up like this in the end. Right now, um, it has no fallback because it has to try a, a quick connection over, and, and when that fails, what should it do if it doesn't work? Right, so. Potentially, it should do the full dance and then try again with a HTTP two connection instead. But it doesn't do that now, and I'm not sure that is wise. It's certainly much more complicated than doing a fallback from HTTP two to HTTP one, right? Because then it was just negotiated in a friendly way. <clears throat> so I think it'll remain like this: no fallback. So if you want to do it, then sort of the this going the spec way how to do bootstrap to HP3 the, the friendly way to do it without having to fall back rather to fall up. Mm. One one reason why fallback why we might need fallback in the end anyway but we, I, I think we'll uh, sort of I'd post, postpone considering fallbacks uh, is that you know when you when you're going to use a browser to do HTTP three, they will do the HTTP three upgrade in the background. You know, you go to a page, and if that page says, "Oh, I'm on HTTP three as well," the it'll it'll transparently do that in, in the background. You will notice if it attempts, and if it fails, it'll just, it, won't, it won't tell you. It'll just you won't notice. But with curl, if you happen to say, "Oh, I want to go HTTP three and it fails," it'll be very notable. So, in a browser world, they will do the upgrade much, much more transparently and, and easily while we can. So maybe we need a better way to do this. But anyway, to, to do the bootstrap in, in the standard way, we use the old service option. And if you build curl right now, then old service is also experimental. So you have to build it on purpose in build time, enable it on purpose. So then you use this dash dash alt, old service and the file name or a dash, depending if you want to read it from file or standard in. I think you can also you quote quote to not use a file at all and just keep it internally in memory, uh, because this uh, gives curl a file uh, to cache the information in, pretty much like cookies. It's it's a it's a sort of a similar to cookies here. So if if you specify a file name, it'll use that file as a cache. It'll read from the file to figure out if there's an existing HTTP three or oh, sorry an exist, existing set of old services to use, and once you run curl, it'll save the cache to that file again in case it has updated the cache. So if you run this uh, against a, a HTTP three server, it'll respond with the old service headers. We will save the cache, and when you run it the next time, it'll find the header in the cache and it'll go HTTP three. Ideally, then if things work and if everything is announced the same way, proper way. <clears throat> and if you if you do this right now, you will notice then that oh, a lot of those uh, fancy development servers that are running HTTP three draft twenty two 
mostly called H3-22. Uh, so if you if you go to the the quick community and ask them, hey, what service do you run for H3? And they will tell you, here's a server. They, most of them, they don't support all service. So most of them will require that you use the dash dash HTTP3 option and go directly to their server, sort of avoiding this bootstrapping way. And then right now, uh, you can also be fooled by, if you go to the cloudflare-quick.com server, it'll announce uh, an old service to the old draft version that they don't run, uh, or that we don't run even. <clears throat> so it won't work for us. They announce H320, but we support H322 only. So uh, it's a little bit of a situation there, but uh, when it works, it's kind of cool. And of course, then it takes an additional round trip because you have to do the first request over HTTP 1 or HTTP 2 and oh, you can do HTTP 3 the next time and then you run it again and then it can do HTTP 3. I have uh, considered, someone mentioned it before too, that uh, I have uh, a plan, I have plans to make sure that we can actually upgrade to HTTP 3 at once without doing, getting the full response, sort of abort the response, reading from the response as soon as you have an old service response and you know that you can go to that instead cut the connection, go to the HP3 server instead as a shortcut somehow. <clears throat> Not sure that it's sensible for most users. It's also a little bit complicated within internally. So I haven't really, well, not complicated maybe, but I, well, complication. So I haven't, I haven't gone down, down that route yet, but I have it, it mentioned in the man page so I, I'll, as something we should do. <clears throat> so when you use old service, it'll do the initial request, just a regular HTTP 1, HTTP 2 usual way. So we can actually upgrade to HTTP 2, do the request, get the old service header over that, or in HTTP 1. I didn't mention this, but um, the previous build instructions and stuff like that, it didn't actually mention HTTP 2 support. So you can perfectly well build curl with HTTP 1 and HTTP 3 support. You don't need to have the HTTP 2 support. You can have, you can pick and choose. one. You need the one to get the three, but you don't need two to get the three. Or you can, so two and three are, are sort of independently available. <clears throat> and on this little page uh, mentioned here, um, on the docs slash alt service dot HTML page on, on the curl site, that um, explains alt service very briefly and it explains the, the file format. Uh, slightly inspired by the cookie file, it has one line per alternate service and it's just basic text lines. It's very easily parsable. Uh, I'm not sure about that format. I'm not sure about how, how to do this fairly sort of, you know, future proof and everything, but oh, that is how it works right now. And uh, it's experimental. I, d I do reserve the right to change that at least mm, slightly. There are also a few features in old service. Old service is a, I wouldn't say complicated header, but it's at least it's feature rich. So there are some features in old service that uh, I haven't implemented in the support here yet. So there, there might also be reasons to extend that support a little bit going forward. I think also, also you know, as long as nobody actually tries it out and nobody uses the header, uh, I don't get to exercise this a lot. So I think it's going forward when people are actually start using this more, I will find more problems and then we will work through it. I'm sure it'll, it'll be fine. So when you run curl down in HTTP 3 support, it looks like this. Pretty much as I mentioned, here's, uh, here's the Cloudflare test server called quick.tech 8443 is the port number. Do that, run curl, dash dash HTTP 3, it'll use quick and HTTP 3 directly to that host and port number. Dash V for verbose, it'll be fairly verbose, uh, some of it too verbose. Early days, I said, my, uh, we need, I've left a bit for debugging and stuff. If you build um, curl yourself, you can enable much more debugging output for this in case you're interested in what's going on. Yeah, 
within the libraries and, and more HTTP3 details. And if you want to do an old service thing, you then do it, as I mentioned, dash dash old service, specify the file name for the cache, um, and then that uh, dash v, of course, for verbose, and then you'll see that it'll <coughs> parse and it'll uh, output uh, ver uh, verbose output when it changes to the alternatives service or if it doesn't, you'll see that it doesn't. <laughs> the alt service is um, talks about alternative. It doesn't actually talk about protocols or schemes. It actually talks about ALPN IDs. So it talks about ALPN in the term. Uh, ALPN for HTTP2 is H2. And the ALPN code for HTTP 3 draft 22 is H3 22. So you'll see that we support H3 22 right now. The official public version for HTTP 3, or the ALPN ID for HTTP 3, will be H3 eventually, but it won't use H3 until the final version. So we will use H3 draft number until then. So that's why you will see. If you do this, you will see H322 used in, in the file and uh, over the wire. And no, right, if, if you do something else than get or head, then of course closing, closing the connection and going to HTTP3 immediately is a bad idea. That is also one of the complications that make me sort of reconsider if I actually should provide that option or not, because I think it's opens for uh, mistakes or, or something. <clears throat> so mm, yeah, it, it's complicated. So uh, I'm not going immediately to HTTP 3 unless you use, for now, unless you use dash dash HTTP 3. So, and, and I, <laughs> this, I, I mean, there are so many complications here. And it's so, so, so much to develop here anyway, so I don't, I don't need that added complexity right now. I can, there are enough things to, to fiddle with here to keep me busy for a while without adding that to, on, on, on the pile. Why, why would it be a denial of service or anything of HTTP2? Uh, it doesn't, this, uh, this is just a request, right? So requesting your request or your request, if you're, that's not a denial of service or any in any way. So if you want to see if your curl supports HTTP 3, you run the regular old dash dash version option or capital V, the short version. And if that then there's there's this feature line that up it outputs the, all the library versions and it, you'll see the features line and the features line will include features like old service and HTTP 3 if those are enabled. If they're not enabled, you won't be able to use these features, of course. Yeah. Ta-da! Magic. And of course, if since you now need to build this yourself to be able to test it, you, you shouldn't be surprised if, <laughs> if the features are there or not. But, I mean, going forward, if you're using someone else's build, that's the way you can uh, test uh, beforehand if your tool actually uh, will support these things. And, you can actually check for these in the library as well. <clears throat> so that's how you use it. Easy peasy. <clears throat> okay, what should work with HTTP 3? Which everything should work with connecting over HTTP 3, uh, sorry, IPv4, IPv6 and happy, happy eyeballs. With the little caveat that I haven't actually landed the happy eyeballs <laughs> pull request yet. Uh, so uh, if you just give me, uh, don't try just yet. If you just wait uh, a, a few hours or so, I intend to land my happy eyeballs pull request. I, uh, maybe. Uh, well, ideally, I do that. There's some quirks left with that. So happy eyeballs being that we raise connection attempts over each, uh, IPv4 and IPv6 at the same time. We do that with TCP connections, and I actually mistakenly broke that with quick connections. I have a pull request to fix it. So. It is going to work uh, really soon. Uh, you can do all those funny name tricks with curl that we have, like dash dash resolve and, and uh, setting host headers and pretty much all of those things. They they work independently of the of the transport. 
protocol. You can do HTTP GET requests. I focus on the GET requests. So uh, the ones without body should work. I'm with quiche. You can do at least uh, well, at least uh, simple dash well, post request and put request with the curl tool. You can do at least with quiche, the quiche backend. Uh, I'm getting there. Uh, so the body. Uh, once I have the happy eyeballs done, I um, I think I need to progress with the requests with body fixes to make sure those work. So everything header, it should be header wise, parsing, adding, removing, all of those should work. So you should try all of them, uh, try them out. Um, and then that includes cookies, of course. You can do co connection caching, so connection reuse and everything should work. Doing one request on the connection and then doing another request on the same connection should reuse the same connection, just doing new HTTP three streams over them. Uh, I haven't tested this widely and when I changed it, the happy eyeballs thing, it, there might be reasons to try it out even more. Um, and what isn't working yet, one uh, sort of that I know isn't working. I'm sure there are many more things that isn't working yet. Uh, and sure, feel free to join in and help out here because uh, there are a lot of things that uh, we could can do and uh, we're not that many people working on this right now. That's basically me on the uh, curl parts and there are individual working on the quick and HTTP3 libraries, but they're outside of curl mostly. So we can do HTTP requests with bodies and or large bodies and we can not right now do multiplexing which is a bit of an ironic, right? Because that's a <laughs> primary feature. But it should be fairly easy to add, but I want to get the other things done first. And it should be, uh, I'm, I'm discussing with the, the Quiche team about how, how I want uh, some minor API additions or f changes in their API to, to facilitate this in a much easier way. And once they agree with me, no, oh, sorry, uh, once we <laughs> or once we figure out how to do it, or, or either they go down the route that I've suggested or, or I adapt more to the way it works right now, um, then I should be able to do it. And it, as I said before, Quick supports streams. So it's more of adding st new streams to Quick and then to send it to be three over that. Uh, it's not a big, actually, I don't think it's a big thing to do, but uh, I'm saving this anyway. Uh, and just as a parenthesis here, with curl in Git, the one that is shipping 7.66.0, it's shipping in a month. We're adding parallel support with the curl tool, right? With the dash capital Z Z letter and then you can do mul then we should be able to do multiplexing with the curl tool too which is a which has never been done before which is interesting and of course that makes it also easy to run multiplexing tests for HTTP 3 against your service you can just use the capital Z option and off it goes or should go right now it'll just break I don't have any tests or CI build set up for HTTP 3 yet I have one CI build building quiche that is coming but uh, <clears throat> since it's early days and I'm, I'm, I don't know how to do the tests really I need to get one of these test servers built and in added to this test suite and CI systems and then build um, test setups against that uh, we'll see about that <clears throat> file bugs if you find any I'm sure that there are many since we're working on this right now in git master it is experimental so as long as we work in in things without that isn't enabled by default we can work on them in git master even even though um it's uh, even if it's in git master i mean it doesn't really affect anyone else that aren't involved in the experiment okay so http <clears throat> 3 with libcurl how do you do it then like this libcurl being the library then so yeah everything curl does is powered by not everything but most of what curl does is uh, powered by libcurl the library so everything i mentioned up to here is a http3 and quick ways it's supported by libcurl because it's everything is done in libcurl just activated by curl so libcurl also provides a few more 
uh, knobs to tweak so that you can actually change the behavior in, so like in, in a few more ways than the curl command line tool can, obviously, because it's an, an API with more flexibility. So let's head dive into how do you do HP3 with libcurl? Easy peasy. So as you can see, this is the smallest possible libcurl um, code, I think that can do a single HTTPS request asking for HTTP3. Someone asked how to do it with libcurl. This is how you do it. You see the option option here is curl opt HTTP version in the middle here, um, somewhere down. I can't even point in the right direction. Somewhere uh, uh, down here, yeah. But you, but you have to. Oh, I, I <coughs> So you, you, uh, you just head down there to the middle of that program. This is an example. This example also exists on the curl website called hp3.c. If you wanna just download it and view it uh, um, on the site instead of just on a strange video stream. So, um, okay. You set the HP version like this. This is has the same sort of obstacles and caveats, as I said before, it forces HTTP 3 and it has no fallback. If, if there's no uh, quick server or HTTP 3 server even on that port number that you're asking for, in this case, then 443 UDP port 443, it'll fail, which may or may not be what you want, but this is how you do it. And you can do it right now, it works. And instead do it um, the old services style the more sort of reliable upgrade style that I've mentioned 22 times already. You set, instead of setting the HTTP version option, <laughs> right, no, that's actually a pretty good way to try out the force because example.com certainly doesn't support HTTP 3, so this will fail right now. I mean, unless they actually fixed it minutes ago. If you want to try it on a, on a, real domain name out there that is actually uh, kind of fun. It's that if you try it on facebook.com, they actually support H3-22 right now. So you can run it on their actual production host name and it works, should work. And even www.facebook.com also works with, with uh, H3-22. Otherwise there are a bunch of uh, development HTTP3 servers. I mentioned a few HTTP3 servers in the in the HTTP3.md file. Let me just show you that again, just briefly. If you go to yeah, the HTTP3.md file and in the, in the bottom and the end of it here, you can see here are a few test servers. Those are different implementations of HTTP3. They all support H322. So you can try it out. Um, I think at least that one, the, that one supports a, a proper alt service header. That one sends a wrong alt service header. I don't think they send the alt service header at all. I don't think they send the ser alt service header. So, uh, well, and they are three, four different implementations. This is um, the Google one. This is the um, IO Quick one. It's a Python implementation. This is Facebook's one, and this is Quiche, Cloudflare's one. Uh, so yeah. So, okay, uh, that's how you... That's how you do it. So, okay, some questions here. Um, would it work without the old service cache file? Yeah, you can you can use the old service in um, in memory. You can just uh, enable old service and it'll just keep the cache in memory without storing it on, on disk. Which then, if you use libcurl, you can just reuse the same handle and it'll keep the cache in the handle. So you just request and request and request. And if you request with old service, it'll do an HP one or two, the first request. And if it, the old service says it can upgrade, it'll do HP three in the follow up request. So uh, if, you, if you use this and HTTP 3 is not supported 
in libcurl. Oops, I'm clicking on things here. I shouldn't do that. Uh, uh, if so, if you're asking for HTTP3 and it's not supported by it, uh, by libcurl, it, this uh, easy set opt function will return an error and it just won't set HTTP3. So it will use it will basically be a failed request or if, I mean not a, not an HTTP request a failed request to libcurl. Please use HTTP version three. You say it said need I don't support it. So it'll just remain on the previously set option, which by default is depends on what you built curl to use actually. But if you built with HTTP two support, it will it will default HTTP two over HTTPS and HTTP one over plain HTTP. So that is that's what's going to happen even in the HTTP uh, sorry even in the um, lib curl case. So um, and th this actually also goes for all service. So if you, in the old service, I, I included all these, uh, you can actually ask libcurl to only switch to the alternative service supporting one of these protocols and you specify H1, H2, H3. So basically you can say only switch if the alternative has H3 or you can say never switch, only used if it's H1 or blah, blah, blah. Um, and again here, if, you, if you're libcurl doesn't support one of these protocols, it just won't uh, find that alternative at all. It won't use that alternative because that alternative won't be a viable option. Alternatives can be, you know, to any protocol, it could say, oh, I have an HP4 server over here, but we don't know what that is, so we just ignore it. And that, what we don't support, we will just ignore when it comes to old service. Uh, right, and if you want to check uh, with, uh, you want to ask your libcurl does it support http3 or not you can just use the regular curl version info function which is a function that's existed in, in libcurl since a long time um, and it, it basically returns a struct a pointer to a struct really and uh, you can query it for feature bits there does it support http2 does it support http3 does it support all service and uh, and uh, and that is, of course, then if your if the existing library that you're using does it support these features or not? Um, you can also actually uh, get it to show you the quick library that you built it to use, I assuming that you're having a, a that recent um, libcurl that has that has support for that information. Which basically means you need to have it from Git master or the pending 7.66 release. Okay, so that's how you do it with libcurl, easy, and then you just run it and it'll do HTTP3 the same way that the curl too. So I'm approaching two hours. I'm trying to um, wrap it up soon, but um, hang on there, just a little bit more. <clears throat> okay, so when? When will curl with HTTP3 support ship? Right? When when will this happen? <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. Easy question, hard to answer. There are a lot of moving parts in HTTP3 land. Ship. What's ship? What does ship mean? When I decided to consider ship as in ship when a distro might have this enabled for HTTP3, I mean ship, you can build it now, right? And, and ship it with your stuff if you would, pref if you like. I wouldn't advise, uh, uh, I wouldn't suggest that is a good idea, but you can. But I'm, so when will this appear in a distro? So there are a lot of obstacles here and I'm, I, I just wanted to enumerate some of them. I've sort of addressed all of them already, but I just wanna emphasize and go back to the, first we have the specifications, right? We're on draft 22. There's an interim meeting in a month the, the the charter says it should have been finalized already it isn't and it won't be if for more months so the specifications aren't done they're still moving the discussions are ongoing they're they're closing issues in the github repo every day they're moving we can't we can't really be done or have it sort of really reliable until the specifications at least are are done and then we have the libraries that are built on top of and, and using these specifications. They're not done. Many of them are in a fairly sort of 
in, a, in, in developing states. I would say that both Quiche and NGTCP2 that we're using are, are both fairly actively developed and, and the API are, is chain, uh, the APIs are changing, so they're not really close to releasing. So if you want to release something, something stable, we, these are not re released versions that we can use to do anything stable uh, HTTP3 wise on. And before we have stable quick libraries, maybe you know, we can't do the stable HTTP3 in curl. And then we have server side, right? There are not many deployed actually stable release worthy uh, sta uh, server implementations. So there they also then rely on the specifications to stay. Some of them are using, or most of them are using quick libraries or, or quick components that need to be there. Come going. Browser support isn't really necessary for any of this, but I don't think HTTP3 will take off properly until we start to see browsers um, show up with this enabled so that people actually start to use this to exercise the code paths here to run on these servers to make sure that things are actually working and once once browsers are going there there are going to be more servers and they're going to sort of get up to speed to get i mean get the snowball rolling a little bit until this happens where we're on, we're on a really small scale and then we have libcurl then of course so once all of the other things are starting to get there we will get there too and <clears throat> This is experimental in libcurl, but I, I think we can be fairly sure that uh, given a given more time, uh, maybe the rest of the year, I think we will, can be fairly sure about the API so that we will be fairly sure that the API will stick. And then once we have a libcurl, we, we need to figure out the TLS library situation, right? Because th there won't be any distro TLS uh, choice here until that situation is cleared out and that is ideally by popular TLS libraries getting good uh, APIs added so that we can do quick with them properly. And then of course, in Libcurse case, we need to have the quick stuff using one of those libraries that will be included in the distros. Presumably most important is OpenSSL. That's the primary, that's the most used uh, TLS library for for curl users. So once that is done, we can ship curl. I don't think this will happen uh, in, in <laughs> the short term. It'll take a while. Um, hopefully then specifications early next year, maybe the, the, some of the quick libraries are going to do some early releases uh, in close proximity to the, to the specification releases. The service will be there. The browsers will also hopefully ship something to tests as soon as possible. So we have, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe early next year, could be, could that? Uh, and of course, it depends on what we do with curl and the code, how it works, uh, how much time we can spend on it, how much bugs we get report, re reported, and um, we'll see. It'll take a while. We will get there eventually, I'm sure. Just a little work left to, to fix. <clears throat> so that's two hours in curl in source code. <clears throat> it's pretty long going this, so I'm just going to do a little brief summary to just show you some of the uh, concept, the fundamentals of where the quick and HTTP stuff is done in curl. So the source layout is really straightforward in curl right now for, for quick, maybe for everything. So there's a library called libcurl. The, the code is in the, slash, in the lib subdirectory. That's all libcurl code. And in the libquick.h header, that's, that contains the library exposed functions. And by library exposed functions, I mean that they are the functions that um, that libcurl code can assume exists. I mean, those functions are there to provide quick. So if quick is enabled in libcurl, those functions 
will be there. Those are the headers then in the quick.h uh, header. And those are the prototypes, the, the functions. And all the quick and h3 backend specific code, all of those are located in the lib v quick directory. So basically that's uh, that's the home of everything that is quick and h3 related. And we're trying really hard to not to do quick h3 related things in other files. That's um, I'm not uh, we're not really haven't really succeeded I haven't really succeeded in, in, in isolating everything but uh, there's at least not a lot of, of uh, quick and h3 related code in other places. <clears throat> so each quick backend if you want to write a new quick backend if you want to support another quick library for example you implement this function called curl quick connect it is called by libcurl when you when you when it wants to issue a quick connection to it, it provides its passes in uh, address and uh, port and uh, socket and uh, uh, pointer to the connection struct and uh, the quick backend issues the quick connect and then it provides this function which is a pol pulled function that libcurl will ask is it connected is it connected is it connected as soon as there's any traffic on the socket it'll call this and uh, is it connected now is it connected now and uh, of course if there's nothing going on on the socket it'll just libcurl will just wait until some traffic arrives and once the quick connection has been established this one will set a little up flag saying connected and if it fails to connect it'll return an error so those are basically the, the two primary functions here and then uh, there's this third return version information just a convenience thing for for the version output thing <clears throat> but this is really the the full setup of functions that you need to provide for the sort of api wise for the internals and if we look at the quick dot h oh sorry no i um, i intended to take a look at the quiche file this is the quick dot h file look this is my emacs file is here so these are the prototypes for the three functions that are mandatory to implement in a key in a quick backend there's I'm sure that we might um, introduce more functions in here as we go along. But right now, I'm, I'm very happy that there are so few of them. So it's very easy to to sort of keep the the, the quick code constrained and isolated in, in their particular files. So this is quiche.c. It's actually located then in uh, the lib slash vquick slash quiche.c file so here it is <clears throat> this is the top of the file i'm sure that I'm, I'm sure that just going through a source file here on a live stream is really not the way to um, learn much about the code or anything i just wanted to highlight a few little details and then i'm going to rest my throat for a while <laughs> we're on uh, two hours ten minutes right uh, okay so First, I wanted to highlight that you can enable this debug HTTP3 define. It will add more verbose output to the verbose output. So by removing this debug, you actually reduce uh, some, some of that extra blabbiness when you run it. And you can uh, define this to get even more quiche debugging. And then you get a lot of more quick information output, which is, which is very useful if especially when uh, when we want we want to debug things and interact with the library underneath and see wh where is the problem is the problem in my code or is it in quiche or is it the remote server or is it a sort of a quick interrupt problem so and um, so this basically then has this the implement it, int it implements this curl quick connect function this is the one of these that it has to implement it gets the connection handle as a pointer, it gets the socket and then it gets the address. Fine. So it sets up the connection uh, um, and it issues the connect using the, 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 
library then of course uh, the quiche connect function is then called quiche connect so this it will just issue it and blah 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 and it'll issue send it away it'll send quick client initial on this ilpn <coughs> fine but that just sends off the first few packets right or the udp messages i'm not even it's just one i think in the first uh, shot there and then we have this when libcurl then finds traffic on that socket it'll ask the, the quick backend is it connected is it connected and this is the function then that we implement for quiche quick is connected get the, the here's the connection um, right and there's the done so here is the quiche function that checks if the connection is established sets done if so and then we use this quiche has connected function to set everything up and to set everything up to to set up curl to now we're going to use this quick connection instead of a tcp connection or we're going to use this http uh, version instead of another http version going forward it's quite simple we, s we change the receive and send function that we are using internally we change the protocol handler that pro handles https we set that it's multiplex enabled this is http 3.0 we have an internal we just say it's 30 internally um, some other magic here to get things working so um, uh, yeah and then we'll go it has connected so it then pretty much when the next traffic um, curl wants to uh, after the connection after the curl has established a connection sorry i just want to close the door neighbor started using some machine outside um so okay when one um, after uh, quick has connected it's true there and the next time curl wants to send something over that connection it'll actually then inv invoke this function h3 h3 stream send it's called so this is then the function that will handle the http request here and everything this is then magic for http 3 support and so it'll translate the request over from the internal http 1 style over to http 3 and send it off and on it goes um, that is pretty much sort of the, 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 this concept that the, that's the third function it needs to implement curl the quick ver for version <clears throat> and if you go in the same directory you can load the ngtcp2.c file it's the corresponding file for the ngtcp2 backend so it also has a curl quick connect function here connecting socket over quick it'll just in then instead use the, the ngtcp2 library to issue the quick connect it's uh, slightly there it is con client new and blah 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 and off it goes and then quick is connected is called every now and then pulled and uh, it'll figure out if it was a handshake was completed and then off it goes in the same way <coughs> when uh, when the tcp connection is no sorry when a quick connection is established it changes the protocol handler uh, i mentioned uh, like this handler is changed to this and this is the <laughs> it's called quiche in the okay i should rename it but anyway this is a so this is a handler that it sets up for the HTTPS protocol handling so it's actually a struct and full of uh, function pointers and stuff so that's how it it'll from then on call these ng specific functions then instead of 
other uh, HTTP related functions for, for specific actions, specific actions like disconnect. How do you disconnect? The, it knows. Um, yeah. Dev ports also looks wrong, but it doesn't matter because it changes to this after it has connected. So the diff dev port isn't important. Uh, <clears throat> then, um, yeah, that's it. Let's see, did I have anything else to say there? Um, nah, I don't. Poof. Okay, two hours, 15 minutes. Uh, <clears throat> I think I will consider myself done. I think if you have questions, now is an excellent moment in time to ask a question in the Twitch chat because now I'm going to shut this down unless you have a good question. So um, um, this was HTTP3 in curl and uh, I think that is pretty much all I have to say about this at this moment in time. I'm sure we can go back to this uh, later on or, or in the future because there will be more. HTTP3 will change, curl will change. It's been fun. And I, I, as, of, as usual, I will do more curl development streams going forward. There are more things to see and learn. Uh, we're on IRC in the curl uh, channel all the time on Freenode. So if you ever want to just chat curl, we're there. <clears throat> so I am. Um, I'm going to take off. So have a good day, everyone. And um, do check out the curl code, build HP3, try it out. And uh, if you get problems, mail me, tweet me, or file a bug, or join IRC, or, or ask me on my next live stream here on, on Twitch. Uh, anything. It'll be fun. Bye.